The Blessed Eucharist, Our Greatest Treasure, by Father Michael Mueller, Priest of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, Protest of the Author and Preface. In the midst of you standeth one whom you know not, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to loose. John 1, 26, 27. Printed in the year 1880, Imprimatur Martinez Juanes, Archbishop Baltz, Day 22, October 1867. Protest of the Author In obedience to the decrees of Urban VIII of Holy Memory, I protest that I do not intend to attribute any other than purely human authority to all the miracles, revelations, graces, and incidents contained in this book, neither to the titles holy or blessed applied to the servants of God not yet canonized, except in cases where these have been confirmed by the Holy Roman Catholic Church and by the Holy Apostolic See, of whom I profess myself an obedient son, and therefore to their judgment I submit myself and whatever I have written in this book. Preface My dear reader and brother in Jesus Christ, since the spirit of devotion that has urged me to write this book, animates you to read it, and makes us the happy children of the same loving Father. Should you ever hear any person say, I might have spared myself the labor, there being already so many learned and celebrated works which treat of this subject, I beg you to answer that our Lord Jesus Christ, in the adorable sacrament, in such an abundant, is such an abundant foundation that the more it flows, the fuller it becomes, and the fuller it is, the more it flows. Which signifies that the most holy Eucharist is so great and so sublime a mystery that the more we say of it, the more remains to be said. If Saint Alphonsus could say with all truth of the, the passion of our Lord that eternity will not suffice to meet, meditate adequately upon it. We may affirm the same of, of Jesus Christ hidden in the Blessed Sacrament, and with a thousand times more justice apply to our subject what St. Augustine says in praise of the Blessed Virgin, which was, that all the tongues of men, even if all their members were changed into tongues, would not be sufficient to praise her as she deserves. Worldly lovers are accustomed frequently to mention and praise those whom they love, that others may also praise and applaud them. How poor and weak should we, then, consider the love of those who call themselves lovers of the Blessed Sacrament, and yet who seldom speak of it or think of endeavoring to inspire others with a love of it. The true lovers of the Most Blessed Sacrament do not act thus. They speak of it, praise it everywhere, in public and in private, Whenever it is in their power, they try to enkindle in the hearts of all those ardent flames of love which, with which they themselves burn for their beloved Jesus. The object of this little book is, then, to make Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament more generally known and better loved. Our Divine Savior is ready to bestow innumerable graces through this sacrament, which are lost in consequence of the ignorance and indifference of men. 
when the most holy sacrament of the altar is not revered and loved. Scandals will abound, faith will languish, and the church mourn. On the other hand, if this sacrament be worthily frequented, peace will reign in Christian hearts, the devil will lose power, and souls will be sanctified. As many as receive him, to them he gave power to be made the sons of God. It has seemed to me that a work explanatory of the prominent points of this mystery, written in a simple and familiar style, would greatly contribute to remove the obstacles to a right appreciation of this wonderful sacrament of divine love. And with this conviction, I have ventured to lay the following pages before the public, trusting with the blessing of God, they may prove useful to many souls. As Almighty God in his goodness imparts his favors to his faithful followers in diverse ways, sometimes by enlightening their minds in a supernatural manner, and even con conversing with them familiarity, as it were. And as the nature of this work is intended to be practical, not controversial, I have thought it expedient for the edification of pious souls to introduce into it, after a manner of the Holy Fathers, both some revelations made to certain saints, and several miraculous facts concerning this mystery. I know there are some persons who, boasting of being free from prejudices, take great credit to themselves for believing no miracles but those recorded in the Holy Scriptures, esteeming all others as tales and fables for foolish women. But it will be well to remember here a remark of the learned Saint Alphonsus, who says that the bad are ready, as ready to deride miracles as the good are to believe them, adding that as it is a weakness to give credit to all things, so on the other hand, to reject miracles which come to us attested by grave and pious men, either savors of infidelity, which supposes them impossible to God, or of presumption, which refuses belief to such a class of authors. We give credit to a Tacitus, a Suetonius, and can we deny it without presumption to Christian authors of learning and probity? There is less risk in believing and receiving what is related with some probability by honest persons and not rejected by the learned, and which serves for the edification of our neighbor, than in rejecting it with a disdainful and presumptuous spirit. Hence Pope Benedict Fourteenth says, Though an assent of Catholic faith be not due them, they deserve a human assent according to the rules of prudence by which they are probable and piously credible. Now should the reverend clergy deem this publication ever so little calculated to promote devotion to the blessed sacrament, the compiler will believe himself amply rewarded for his labor if they encourage its circulation. Michael Mueller, CSSR, 1867, December 8th.